will as it's five minutes past now i think we'll start and yeah as always will um i don't have any prayers prepared but i just thought we'd start and close with just um yeah in prayer um okay lord god thank you for this time that we can share together to reflect on why we spend you know so much time and energy doing protest pushing for justice we invite you into this space allow us to be your hands and feet on the ground and as things get you know more desperate and we hear more news on how we're how the climate situation is getting is getting I guess kind of into a desperate situation keep us rooted in you let us feel your guidance and your love day to day amen So the session that we are doing today is focusing on Barclays. And um, to start us off, and I guess to kind of frame it a bit, I thought I'd just give a little bit of a, a little bit of a background as to why, um, yeah, why kind of Barclays is a, has been a focus of many of the actions that we've done in the past and why it will continue to be. Um, so yeah let me just set the scene so first of all i guess kind of even though barclays tries to project um, an image of itself of being a responsible and climate friendly bank since 2015 so that was the year that the um that the paris climate agreement was signed um and up until the end of 2021 barclays has financed 167 billion dollars in fossil fuels so that makes Barclays the bank which is the biggest financer of fossil fuels in Europe and it's the seventh largest in the world as well and not only that but Barclays is an eager funder of some of the most polluting companies in the world so since 2015 when the Paris Agreement was signed it's provided two billion dollars um, for oil and gas drilling in the Arctic one of the most sensitive habitats um, and it's also the seventh largest global funder of tar sands and the biggest funder of tar sands in Europe. So that just gives us a little bit of, you know, of a background about, I guess, kind of it frames in the bigger picture of climate change, why Barclays is an important um, company to, to be targeting. An interesting aspect that goes along that is that actually Barclays customers as well, there's, there's indicators that they want change. Um, so there was a poll conducted by ICM um, and it was published in January of last year. And it shows that 79% of Barclays customers were unaware that the bank fund, funds fossil fuels. Um, and two thirds believe that the bank should be expected to stop investing in fossil fuels um and so yeah that also shows that there is some if we can it shows basically that there's some potential for shift here as well because obviously if we think about the fact that Barclays is a bank which cares about profits that actually there's some pressure externally and there's some pressure internally as well um so yeah Barclays has been something that Christian Climate Action has been campaigning on for quite a while now. Um, there have been, Christian Climate Action obviously has local groups around the UK and local groups have been taking action against Barclays um, for many years. I'll just share with you, um, if I can, my screen, just to show you some examples 
children. Okay, so this is a, these are examples of um, actions which local groups have carried out at their local Barclays branches. So at the Barclays branches on their local high streets. Um, there's also an action here, which I'm going to be passing over to Sandy in a little while. And um, this is an action which Sandy took with her local Extinction Rebellion group. So I won't tell you, um, I won't tell you about that now because Sandy will be telling you about that in a short while. But just to say that there is a history of Christian climate action, taking action against Barclays as well. Um, okay. There we go. And also there is on the 14th of November, so in the middle of next month, there also is an invitation for that to be a specific day where groups across the UK take action against their local Barclays branch, the local Barclays branch at the same time. Um, and so this will be a number, it's not just Christian Climate Action, there'll be a number of different groups, including a Money Rebellion. Um, who will be doing this at the same time. Um, so it's probably going to be a situation where groups um, are, I guess, kind of coming together in their local towns to target their local Barclays branch together. And if you do want to know more information about, um, I guess, some of the greenwashing that Barclays does and some of the facts about Barclays, then one of the websites which is quite good at this is called Sharkleys. So S H R S-H-A-R-K-L-A-Y-S dot co dot UK. Um, so now what I'm going to do is pass over, I'll first pass over to Sandy um, and she can give a little bit of an, yeah, talk to you guys about the action that she's taken in the past. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Holly. Um, yeah, uh, so I, I come from Lincoln. Um, and the questions are what, how and why, and I'm going to take them in reverse order, why, how and what. Um, so why do we do it? Well, it was part of the summer uprising. Uh, I wanted to support my local XR group. Uh, I wanted to find out, um, find a worthwhile local target. So, you know, we get this criticism all the time. Oh, you know, why do you trouble ordinary people? Why don't you take it to the people that matter? So because of all that Holly's just said about uh, Barclays, and because I know that Barclays can change because I had a paltry student account with Barclays back in the 70s and um, I heard about apartheid and Barclays funding of apartheid and I withdrew my paltry amount from the bank and in those days there was such a thing as a manager and the manager of the Skegness branch of Barclays rang me up said why are you taking your money out so I said because of apartheid and that, that was the end of the conversation. However, within the decade, they'd pulled out their funding from the apartheid regime in South Africa. So I felt reassured by knowing that Barclays is um, a bank which can change. And the, the other reason why for me was we just had a sermon series on the creed. And the question was, what, how do our lives change because of what we believe? And I prepared because my... Uh, interim vicar encourages people to give testimony so I prepared a little testimony just a, an A4 side uh, uh, as to what action I was taking and that was a bit scary because I hadn't taken the action I had no idea whether the vicar would approve or, or not I, well I was fairly sure he wouldn't approve um, but anyway um, I said to him I'd like to speak on such and such a Sunday and um, and he said, oh, yeah, all right, I'll fit you in. There's two others speaking as well about how they were putting the creed into action. And I said, I can't confirm it until after Wednesday, which was the day of the action, because I hadn't told anybody, including my darling husband, uh, that I was doing it. So so that was the kind of why. So we wanted a, 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 a worthwhile target. I wanted to support my local XR group to do something that would get uh, get us into the press because you can do all sorts of things and the press don't take any notice and we've only got a little local press but it's quite sympathetic <coughs> in Lincoln especially our online uh, reporter and uh, I felt it was time for me to begin to be a bit more bold with my Christian 
beliefs. So what did we do? How? So I talked to my trusted um, XR friends who obviously, you know, you're many of you probably are in a local group and we know each other over the years and respect each other. I prepared my testimony for church and I uh, checked that I might be able to do it on the Sunday following. I made quite clear, so I, I, I took my testimony to my XR friends, none of whom would identify as Christian as far as I know, and I said to them, these are my parameters, no glue, no paint, no interrupting ordinary people going about their business, because I feel quite strongly about that. I need to be able to say that as a Christian to my congregation, that this is where I stand on this, but I have very good reasons for doing it otherwise, which I did. Anyway, they all agreed uh, that they would stick to my parameters. And we decided on an all women, all local uh, group going into the Barclays Bank. There was there's already good engagement, as I say, between XR and the Lincolnite, which is this online news reporting service in Lincoln. <clears throat> we already knew the context of the bank. It has a great window, as you saw in the picture, onto the high street. We were the best window display on the high street that day, I have to say. Um, uh, we knew that there was a staircase just behind. We were careful not to block the fire escape. So we'd already kind of decided that this was a really a good spot. So we weren't going to somewhere we didn't know. We knew that we would fit in that space. Uh, I, I did put a little note in my note. What worries did we have? And I have to say our big worry was that the day before our action, the heat had peaked at 42 degrees in Lincoln. Uh, or perhaps, well, Lincolnshire anyway, but probably nearer 40 in Lincoln. And I thought we would fry in that window. That was our big fear. But anyway, it didn't happen on the day, it was okay. Um, so the, the other XR uh, participants uh, were set to do a, a little action at the same time. So they started down at the railway station and they walked up to the high street uh, at the time we were expected to be locking ourselves on. Uh, they set up a table, did outreach and had a samba band outside. So that was the why and the how. Uh, so what did we actually do? Well, we had a two, two metre length of chain, which we had padlocked around our waists and hid them under our jackets. When we walked down, we were smartly dressed. We walked in more or less together um, and we just quickly locked ourselves together. All we had to do was to reach out the bit of chain hook it into the next person's waistband and lock the padlock. We did have a set of padlocks with all the same key. Had there been an emergency, we had to get out. Um, our uh, well-being lady had got a key. Um, so the police didn't actually have to cut the, the chains with their bolt cutters, but they chose to do that anyway. Um, so we walked in quickly. One end of, of the line of women, uh, she locked herself to the staircase. So just a, an ordinary staircase. We had prepared a posy of flowers and a note for each of the cashiers to say we were completely non-violent uh, in the event. Obviously, the bank has a protocol for when something like this emergency happens. Uh, they all disappeared. Uh, so we weren't allowed to give out our posy of flowers. Uh, we had reversible posters which we held up in the window, which you saw, I think, were quite effective. On one side, it said a personal message. So I'm doing this for my grandchildren or something similar to that. And on the other side, it had a, one of the facts about Barclays and the amount of uh, money they're spending on fossil fuels etc. We had a well-being with us throughout who was reassuring anybody who came in the shop that this was not a violent protest in any way and we had the brilliant Etienne Scott stop as our communications person um, and he kept coming in and going out and talking to the public and the police and as I say all the uh, interesting interactions going out on the street, which we were able to observe, not hear a single thing because it was very soundproofed, um, but it was very interesting to watch body language, to actually observe your XR friends in conversation with members of the public. That was a real education for me. I really enjoyed that. And to see how long and how persistent some of them were in just very, well, ongoing conversations. We did have a, a troublesome group of young people who obviously had nothing better to do than to uh, 
caused a bit of mayhem outside the window, but that didn't matter. And the XR folks that were out there dealt with them very kindly and pleasantly. And um, and uh, yeah, so um, they, they didn't go away. Actually, they didn't go away until after we disappeared into the police van. Um, there were a couple of things I was bothered by. One thing was I, I expected the Barclays staff to possibly engage just in a brief conversation with one of us or some of us, but they didn't at all. They just said, we want you to move, off you go. Um, this is going to be trespassing. They were, they were perfectly polite and pleasant, but they, we wanted to say, actually, you know, you work for Barclays Bank. Do you know about this? Blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, and they they didn't engage. Um, and the other thing was slightly, um, uh, no, that, that was it. There was nothing else that troubled us. It actually, it was, it was very smooth. It went very smoothly. I did give my testimony the following week. Um, my uh, vicar uh, didn't say a lot, but he's, he's a very nice man. And he, he, he gave me the go ahead. I said to him, I'll email it to you if you like. He said, no, this is your thing. You do it. And I haven't been trusted like that for a very long time in the church that we happen to belong to. <laughs> so that felt very good. And uh, the two other people got a round of applause following their testimonies. And I didn't, but I did decide that I thought if anybody applauds me, I'll burst into tears immediately. So it was a good thing they didn't applaud me. But in fact, at the following Wednesday, um, they did applaud after, which is a group of elderly people on the Wednesday at communion, traditional communion, and they applauded. But um, I think I've probably told you, and my 10 minutes must be nearly up. So if you hang on to any questions, do be prepared to ask them at the end. I think I've said all I want to say, Holly. Thanks so much, Sandy. Thank you very much. We'll hand over to Drew now. Um, and Drew's going to tell us about um, organising the National Trust motion. Hi, everyone. Uh, Holly, can you just confirm that you can hear me? Perfect. The volume's OK. All right. I'm, I'm Drew in Liverpool. Uh, just a little bit on the why still. Um, uh, I'm just going to read you a short extract from Barclays climate related financial disclosure of 2021. It's about their fear of reputational damage. They say a reduction of trust in the group's integrity and competence may reduce the attractiveness of the group to stakeholders and could lead to negative publicity, loss of revenue, regulatory or legislative action, loss of existing and potential business, client business, reduced workforce morale and difficulties in recruiting talent. Ultimately, it may destroy shareholder value. Barclays is linked to clients across a wide range of sectors and geographies, including those that have the potential to cause or contribute to significant adverse impacts on the climate. So they know perfectly well um, uh, their exposure to uh, risk because of their, their, their deep, uh, the way they're deeply embedded with the, the fossil fuel carbon uh, industry. Um, Why well, the National Trust? I've been a National Trust member since I can't remember, actually, but um, vaguely recall many, many years ago, they had uh, a special deal, I think, for members who wanted to join Barclays Bank, but I can't find any, oh, someone's nodding his head. Oh, I can't find any evidence of that uh, anywhere online now, but it, that was so. Um, uh, I, I got involved in a, a focus group that the National Trust have, uh, and they send you stuff from time to time asking for comment. And uh, they're, they're planning uh, mitigation works because of climate change. It's going to cost them a lot of money. And they, they were proposing going out to the membership asking for more money to cover this. Uh, and so they were asking responses to some images that they were going to post up. And in reply to that, uh, my response to each one was leave Barclays Bank because it seems to me to be a disgrace that you're going to be raising money for climate mitigation and who are you going to bank that money with? You're going to bank it with Barclays who are fueling the climate, the very climate crisis that's causing you so much difficulty. Um, the, 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 they, have a, they have a forum, it's called Our Place. Uh, and if you go on that to have a chat, you'll find you can have a conversation with maybe 12 people out of a membership of nearly 6 million. So it's, it's, not, it's, it's not very effective. Um, then um, uh, last uh, early this year, the opportunity came up to join uh, a money rebellion action, which was to go to the Barclays Bank annual general meeting on May the 4th in Manchester. So I went along to that 
uh, and joined the disruption of the AGM meeting, stood on a chair uh, and shouted across at, at the directors. And it was while I was up there that I was thinking it, I, something happened and a, a connection was made between annual general meeting and national trust. Uh, the National Trust Annual General Meeting is one which um, I've never bothered to take part in before. I've got the voting papers and, through, and put them in the recycling. Um, and that is what most, most of the members do. Um, so uh, again, I, I, I am prone to having uh, pipe dreams, which uh, are rather fanciful. And uh, usually somebody of, of good sense will come along and say to me, don't be stupid. Uh, that that that's that won't make sense. But I went on a walk uh, early in, in uh, it was in in April with XR Walkers and Basha was was on it. And I, I mentioned this idea to her, uh, and she said, "Well, I, actually, I think that's really good. Why don't you do it?" Um, so that was that was the the, the catalyst really for for starting it. So I contacted the National Trust and found out we had four weeks left to get the resolution in because there's a deadline for getting for getting the resolutions in and you have to have 45 supporters and you have to have uh five proposers managed to rustle all of this up through christian climate action through uh through the whatsapp chat we managed to find all the people we needed and we, we got uh, the resolution in um the, re the resolution uh was drafted with the assistance of a chancery barrister i used to be a solicitor and he was a Nick Jackson was a Chantry barrister in Liverpool. He did this completely pro bono uh, and helped with the drafting of the resolution. Um, and it, it has, I like to think that it has an element of Christian theology in it because we're giving Barclays a chance to repent, uh, to renounce their addiction to, to fossil fuels uh, and, and to, to become potentially become foremost as the financier of, of a green economy for, for, for jobs. Uh, for biodiversity, for global justice, for fuel security, and that they, why not? Why not ha have them do it? So we're giving them that opportunity. That's what the resolution is doing. Uh, and it's and it's giving them a, a, a time limit. So they, they've got until the 28th of February, 2024, uh, to make that decision. That's a date which is the end of the National Trust uh, financial year. Um, and um, if they don't, then National Trust will shift to uh, a, a, another bank. So um, we, we joined in a dialogue with National Trust um, and I continue doing research for supporting paperwork, press releases, um, in, information that was being put out to, to garner support. One of the very interesting things I found was a webinar that the National Trust officers did back in February. And you can see that certainly within the community of their own staff, there really is a desire to be doing the right thing. Uh, the National Trust uh, rena uh, gave up its investments in fossil fuels in, by decision of 2019. That was a totally ethical decision, not, not a business decision. So they, they, they've done the right thing. Um, and so what we're looking to do is to, is to nudge them more in the in the right direction and also when you consider that they've got nearly six million members that's about 10 percent of the adult population of the country um and also i realize of course there's a lot of people who used to be members of the national trust but for some reason haven't continued their membership so there's maybe something like 15 20 percent of the population which is very sympathetic with the, with the with the values that the national trust seems to stand for and to my mind we we can attribute them as speaking with the voice of civil society um uh, and it struck it's also struck me about this this action that here's an opportunity to get some information out to potentially to six million people because it goes because the voting book goes through all those doors um they're not all going to read it but a, but quite a number of them will do and so the information about what what Barclays are like, what they're about, the need the need to effect change, be 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 the, the mechanism for change, that can be communicated to a much bigger cohort of people. Uh, so we're it, it's reaching out to the people who would never join us uh, in in any any kind of nonviolent direct action. Um, I also thought that it would be an opportunity for the churches to be energised, and I'm afraid in that respect it pretty much failed. Uh, it was very very difficult to get. Um, to get traction with the with the faith communities, um, everybody's very busy. 
Uh, there was a lot of other things going on during the summer and it, the thing hit a bit of a lull. Uh, but then about five weeks ago, uh, I was contacted by the Sunrise Project. They're an NGO that help um, uh, other groups. Uh, they were behind the Ad Action uh, campaign about advertising by HSBC and Barclays and got a successful result by the Advertising Authority, which criticized HSBC for their, for their greenwashing uh, and, and Barclays. So it's those people, very, very good at media and messaging. Uh, Fossil Free London, uh, XR Grandparents, um, uh, and also Sharkleys, very important Sharkleys. So all those groups suddenly came along and said, we'll help you. Um, so we, we've managed to build up a lot more, uh, a lot more traction before voting uh, closed yesterday. Um, uh, we, we've, 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 we don't know what the result is going to be yet. We, we have no idea of how, how voting will go. Um, uh, but we do know that um, as a result of putting this resolution in, that it has already had effect. And because this is a recorded video, I'm not going to tell you what that is. But, but I, can, I can say in the breakout rooms, but I'm very, very encouraged by the response that we're having from the professional team at the National Trust. Uh, and they've actually, for reasons that I can't explain quite now, they've actually um, were quite uh, grateful for the resolution because, it, because it's, it's opened some doors. Um, and then um, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the other aspect that I'm excited by this is that I've learned through the Sunrise Project that there is a groundswell of, of organizations who've been beavering away behind the scenes to, to get both those clearing banks and the ethical banks to, to, to come up with a solution because National Trust are not the only people that bank with Barclays. Uh, as Christians, it's embarrassing for us that Christian Aid bank with Barclays and Tear Fund bank, bank with Barclays. Um, and I don't think that's because they like banking with Barclays, they're just stuck with them. Um, and who, who else are we supposed to go to who's going to give us uh, an, an equally good service? So, and, the, and the, the eth what the ethical banks need is uh, a, a strong signal uh, that there's a demand for a, a, a good uh, commercial banking product from them. Uh, and this resolution is helping with that. It, 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 re it really is. Um, and so we're, we're, we're hoping that... Um, irrespective of the outcome of the vote on the 5th of November, uh, that there's going to be further movement in that direction in due course. And so it will, it, it will be um, uh, the primer for change. Um, I don't know if I stuck to who, what, why, where completely, but I think I probably had my time. Oh, there is one other thing, is we've been very strongly supported by craftivists. This is uh, an oak leaf. And um, Helen Burnett and her, her craftivist group uh, at church uh, made, have made a whole bag full of these things and, and, and little, little crocheted acorns, which we can take along. And we've also had some wonderful craftivists who've uh, been doing embroidery on some table napkin, uh, on serviettes. And the idea is, is that once we're in the meeting, we're going to give the trustees um, uh, these, these craftivist gifts. So a bit like Cota Hopes, the, the idea is to is to have a uh, a, a different way of um, a, a, of approaching them be, 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 because a curious thing about the national trust governance is that the trustees do not have to follow the outcome of the vote it's not mandatory so what we're hoping obviously is that we succeed um, but they don't necessarily have to follow the vote but equally if we don't succeed there's still a possibility that sometime in the future uh, they will they will quietly move away from Barclays. That's what we're that's what we're hoping and praying for. Thank you. Thank you very much, Drew.